For the setup, this is now for the sculptured nail part. The hand is already there. I put a new paper towel under her hand so it's clean because I am kind of assuming that this is a new procedure. New client, same client but new procedure. I uh, put away most of my bottles except I have the polish remover because I'm going to take off polish off of her index finger to put, build an acrylic nail there. I have the powder and the liquid. It's odorless. Odorless means it's oil based. But when I, as I'm doing it, everything should face me. All the labels need to face me. And I have primer. I have two Dappen dishes so I can pour my product into. And I have my paper towel, which has a form, a three way buffer, orange wood stick if you need it an acrylic brush and a file, acrylic file. I also have cotton and hand sanitizer. The first step is to sanitize my hands and I have to sanitize hers. Her finger, her index finger, the directions say. But, you know, just sanitize it, doesn't matter. You can sanitize it all. Okay, and I need to remove the polish. Do you think that it's dry already with dry polish? No, probably not, but I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to take it off. So for red polish, I'm glad in a way that they're making you do red so you can um, learn how to take it off too. So I'm going to saturate my cotton ball with polish remover. And for red polish, or any polish, the best way to do it is to leave the polish remover on for a second and then jiggle it back and forth towards the front. And do you see how it takes it off? You don't, if you do this with red polish, you're going to smear it all over the client's hands. So this way you soften it and you just drag it forward and so you don't get it all over the client's hands. But I want to make sure I get all that red off. Okay. So I removed the polish. The next step would be to etch or to um, scratch the free edge to remove the shine. Because if I put, build the liquid, the liquid is going to seep into it and it's going to adhere better. So you don't want to do smooth on smooth. So I want to rough that surface and remove the shine a bit. And I'm just going to scratch it. Okay. Let me go ahead and pour my product. So it's going to come sealed if you're getting it from, from this kit company. So you want to open up the seal. You don't need a lot of liquid, you're building one nail. And the odorless needs less liquid than the odor product. And since I just filed that, I might have powder on it, so I want to wipe that off. You could wipe it with a cotton ball. And I'm going to put my form. Before you put the form on, it's a good idea to kind of uh, roll it around. You make it flexible so that you can have a nice curve to it. Otherwise, it'll stay flat underneath. So I'll take that off. And apply the form. Let me see if I could bend this finger up so you could see. So you, you kind of place it underneath the free edge and then these two top pieces don't really have to stick together. The important part is that the bottom sticks together because that bottom sticking together is going to make sure that your form fits right under the curve of the, of the tip. You don't really want to have gap, a gap between the tip and the form. You want it to fit nice. If you, um, let me take this off. 
if you don't have this kind of form and you try to, to stick the back two together, watch what happens to the curve. It flattens out as opposed to sticking the bottom together, you get a nice curve. So you want that curve. If your form is on correctly, it makes building the nail much easier. If the form is on incorrectly, it makes it much harder. So again, the bottom two flaps stick together. Place the primer. And this is simulated primer. I think it's just base coat. Yeah, it looks like the other bottle. So simulated primer. and I'm ready to build. So you have 20 minutes for this as well. So the key with odorless acrylic is less liquid. Odorless acrylic and regular acrylic are the same chemical except they've added oil to the odorless. So regular acrylic is alcohol based and odorless acrylic is oil base and if you put a cup of alcohol rubbing alcohol on your kitchen counter and you put another cup of oil vegetable oil cooking oil on your counter tomorrow you come back the alcohol will be gone and the oil will still be there right the alcohol is going to evaporate and so the fumes evaporate and that's why we smell the regular acrylic when you add oil to something, you weigh down the fumes and they don't evaporate. It's still the same chemical here, but they've added oil to it so it can't evaporate and that's why we don't smell it. So you, you need less liquid when you're building this kind of acrylic. And also when we finish, remember how it has the oily, tacky, sticky residue on top? That's because the oil can't evaporate. So it sits on top till we physically remove it and I'm, I'll remove it. Okay, so I'm ready to build the acrylic. So remember, saturate my brush and then wipe off the excess liquid. And I just want the tip of my brush to go into my powder. And I don't know when it's proportioned, when the liquid and the powder is proportioned until I shake it. If I shake it and nothing falls off, that means I've got a lot of liquid in there and it could absorb more powder. So I'll dip it in again. Now when I do it, if I shake, do you see how little powder falls off? That means it's absorbed a good ratio. So I'm going to place that ball of product. Doesn't matter where I place it. Okay, so that back up again, because this could happen to you too. Pick it back up again and leave it there. I still have moisture. I still have oil in this brush. And look at the ball. It's pretty dry. So if that's a dry ball, I need to wet it. So if I touch it with my brush and I have enough oil on my brush, it's going to soften it. Do you see how it's, um, it's allowing me to, to play with it or, or mold it? Because the, the moisture from my brush is coming onto that. And the, the key with this odorless is to work it less than you think you need to. So I am pushing it into place, I'm pressing it into place, but I'm not brushing it into place. I'm just pressing. Now that was a small ball of product. I need more. And all I'm doing is trying to extend the free edge a little bit and cover the nail plate. So I need more product. I'm going to wipe my brush because if you get acrylic in there and you don't keep it clean, it's going to solidify. So that was a very small. I'm going to get more. So this time I want a bigger ball of product. I'm not going to wipe my brush as much. I want more powder. So I wiped it only once and I'm absorbing powder. How much? Nothing fell. That means it could absorb more. That's better. I don't want it white either. I want it translucent. The ball of product. Wipe my brush and touch it. And just press it into place. If it's really dry, I could wet my brush and bring moisture to that with my brush. And do you see how it softens it? It wet it again. So the main thing that I'm getting graded on is that the nail is proportioned to her nail and that I'm not getting any product on the uh, cuticle. So 
So as soon as I put it there, I'm going to leave it alone. It doesn't need you to work with it too much. I'm going to build a thicker free edge. And you have 20 minutes to build one nail, and that's plenty of time. I'm just working towards the cuticle, back to cover the nail plate. Here, when you're working on a client, you do want to tilt the hand down a little bit so that if the product is very wet, it doesn't melt and seep into the cuticle. So this is a dry ball of product. I want to wet it, so I'll get more liquid and touch it with the liquid, and it wets it, and it allows me to work with it a little better. And notice I still haven't brushed. I'm just pressing into place. And the last section would be the cuticle area. So I definitely want to lay the hand down. So again, if it drips, it doesn't drip in the cuticle. If I, if I get this very, very wet, then it's going to seep into her cuticle, so I want to focus on a drier ball of product. You could always add more liquid. So that's a drier ball of product. Or powder. Or powder, yeah. If it's too wet, you could dry it up with more powder. So that's very dry. It needs moisture. As I'm pressing it, it's cracking. So it's telling me I need to add some liquid. If I add too much liquid, it will drip around. So I don't want that to happen either. So it's getting too wet. I'm going to wipe my brush. So I took the liquid out of my brush onto the paper towel, and now I'm going to shape it better without any moisture there so that it doesn't seep around. Okay, so I'm done. I'm done building. Let me show you, though, just on the tip, I want to show you what will happen if, if it's too wet. So I've got a lot of liquid on my brush and a little powder on my brush, less powder. It's very transparent. If I put it down, it's going to drip. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's dripping around. If it's dripping, let me push it over, let it drip off the edge and show you what you can do. I want to wet it some more. So I want to show you. See how the edge now is dripping? So what do I need to do? I need to absorb the liquid from that and put it on the paper towel somehow. So I dry my brush and I will touch the ball of acrylic and wipe my brush. Touch the ball of acrylic and wipe my brush. So I'm taking the liquid from this to the paper towel. And that's going to, and you notice it's not dripping any longer. I'm controlling it. So too much liquid, you're going to take it off. Not enough liquid, you're going to add. Okay. So I'm done building the acrylic, and it does need a little bit of time to dry. So as this is drying, I cleaned my brush. Make sure that none of the acrylic is in there. If I have powder or if it's dirty, I could wet it with my liquid and wipe it just to make sure it's clean. It's clean, so I'm done with that. Um, I'm not going to need my liquid and my powder any longer, so I'm going to neutralize it. This is toxic if it's separate, but once they're combined together, they neutralize each other. So I can pour the liquid over the powder or the powder over the liquid, doesn't matter. As soon as that hardens, that's going to be non-toxic. Just like an acrylic you could put in your finger, your finger acrylic, hard acrylic, you can put it in your mouth, you're not going to get poisoned because they've been neutralized. And that's how you dispose of it. My dish. And for this part, I'm going to do, 
I'm going to just make sure that it's that the powder and the liquid have saturated. And throw away the orange wood stick. And I could clean out my Dappin dish. Let's see if this is dry now. So, so if you touch it and it makes this noise, then it's dry. Although if you look at it, it looks shiny and wet. It's going to look shiny and wet till next week because it's oil, right? But if you hear this noise, then it's dry. So that means I could take off the form. When you take off the form, you don't want to yank it off. You want to gently kind of press it away from the uh, nail and pull it out. Yeah, because sometimes if you didn't put the form on correctly, it'll pull the whole acrylic off. So this is trash. That gets thrown away. Now I've got that oily residue sitting on top. I have to remove it. So I'm going to take my coarse file and I'm going to scratch off the, the tacky layer from one section to the other, from one side to the other. So do you see that tackiness is coming off? Once I remove the oil from the surface, then I have a regular acrylic surface and I file just like I would a re regular acrylic. Do you see that? The tackiness. So you can't file back and forth until you remove this. And now that I've removed it, I could start shaping. And remember one of the things it said in the uh, directions was to bevel. So if I file this way, the top, and then I go this way and I file the side, and then I go this way and I file the side, I'm going to have corners to blend. So beveling means rounding off as you're filing. start filing with the coarse side and then you move to the softer side you want to look at different angles too to make sure that it's not higher on one side it did say in the directions that you're looking for balance so I already made it as as balanced as I wanted to make it now I want to smooth it and you do uh, the dark, the roughest side first. So this is the roughest side. Now I'm buffing it just to make it smooth. Then I go to the next side, which is this side. I think the white is the next side. And the light gray. So when I'm finished, I'm going to turn the hand so that the examiner knows that I'm finished. And in the meantime, I'm going to clean up. So the brush goes into the soiled implements container. The acrylic files get thrown away. And the dappen dishes go into the soiled implements container. And I'm going to sanitize these. The cotton stayed in the bag, so I don't have to throw it away. Q-tips didn't get used. I don't have to throw them away. This gets thrown away. This paper towel gets thrown away. 
And when it's time to clean up, I'm going to take my cloth towels and put them in the laundry bag, soiled laundry bag. And that's it.